How do you measure the restless energy hidden beneath an archipelago carved by the clash of giant tectonic slabs? When the earth roars to life beneath the sea, what processes unfold far below the seabed to unleash shockwaves strong enough to ripple through cities and villages? And why is it that the Philippine region, home to more than 100 million people, is forced to live with such persistent reminders that the very ground beneath their feet is part of one of the most complex and volatile tectonic junctions on Earth? These questions resurface once more following the powerful seismic jolt that struck off the central Philippines coast late on the evening of Tuesday, September 30th, 2025, when a magnitude 6.9 earthquake rattled the seas near Calape, followed by a sequence of significant aftershocks. At precisely 9.59 in the evening Philippine local time, Instruments recorded a major earthquake with its epicenter approximately 11 kilometers east, southeast of Calape, Bohol, at coordinates 11.151 degrees north latitude and 124.138 degrees east longitude. The hypocenter lay at a depth of 10 kilometers, a shallow crustal depth that favors destructive shaking a seismic energy has little time to dissipate before reaching the surface. The shaking intensity registered as strong to very strong across several municipalities, with online systems categorizing the felt reports as level 9 on the DYFI scale. But this initial rupture was not alone. Barely 13 minutes later, at 12 minutes past 10 in the evening, a magnitude 5.2 aftershock broke through 7 kilometers east-southeast of Talisay, again at a depth of 10 kilometers, suggesting continued readjustment of the faulted crust. Within less than half an hour, at exactly 10.33 in the evening, another magnitude 5.0 tremor struck 0 kilometers east-northeast of Libertad. Just six minutes later, at 10.39 in the evening, yet another magnitude 5.0 aftershock shook zero kilometers southeast of Guadalupe. Then, after a brief lull into the midnight hour of October 1st, another magnitude 5.0 tremor occurred at 12.34 in the morning, 15 kilometers east-southeast of Calape. Together, these aftershocks painted a portrait of an active rupture zone, a system releasing stress through sequential slip events rather than one single catastrophic rupture. To understand why such a strong quake erupted here, one must zoom out from the towns and coastlines and look at the Philippines' position in the grand tectonic chessboard of the Western Pacific. The Philippine Sea Plate, upon which the archipelago partly rides, is a restless fragment squeezed between larger plates. The enormous Pacific Plate to its east, the Eurasian Plate to its northwest, and the Sunda Plate to its southwest. Unlike many tectonic plates whose boundaries are simple ridges or trenches, the Philippine Sea Plate is hemmed in by nearly continuous zones of convergence. Almost every border around this plate is a subduction zone, where one slab of lithosphere is thrust beneath another into the mantle. These convergences spawn not only chains of volcanoes, but also intense seismicity with earthquakes reaching depths of 600 kilometers below Japan and the Marianas. The earthquake near Calape was no anomaly in such a setting. The Philippine archipelago itself is sandwiched between opposite-facing subduction systems. To the east, the Philippine sea plate dives beneath the islands along the Philippine Trench and its northern extension, the East Luzon Trough. To the west, the Sunda Plate plunges eastward beneath Luzon, Panay, Negros, and Mindanao along the Manila, Negros, and Cotabato trenches. In between lies the archipelago, scarred by the Philippine fault, 
an enormous strike-slip fault running more than 1,200 kilometers from northern Luzon to Mindanao. This configuration means stress is delivered from multiple directions at once. Plates do not merely collide head-on. Instead, oblique convergence dominates, forcing both vertical subduction and horizontal shearing. In central Philippines, where Bohol lies, this interplay of forces creates an intricate lattice of faults, arcs, and microplates. The region sits near the convergence of the Negros Trench to the west and the Philippine Trench to the east. The motion vectors of plates in this zone average about 80 millimeters per year, a fast pace in geological terms. When such movement is resisted by friction along faults or subduction interfaces, stress accumulates. The 6.9 magnitude quake was the result of that stress abruptly overcoming friction, releasing energy stored in locked fault patches. One particularly interesting feature of Philippine tectonics is the phenomenon of back arc extension. While one plate dives beneath another, pulling crust downward into the mantle, stresses behind the volcanic arc can stretch and thin the overriding plate. This extension can generate smaller spreading centers, faulting and earthquakes within the arc itself. Researchers since the late 1970s have noted how arcs like the Marianas and the Ryukyus decouple from the main Philippine sea plate through such extension. In the central Philippines, similar stretching has been identified, meaning that even within the plate interior, faults can rupture in response to forces from both sides. The shallow depth of the Calape quake suggests it did not originate from deep subduction interface slip, but from one of these shallow crustal structures, possibly a splay fault related to the Philippine fault system, or another intra-arc fault accommodating strain between the converging plates. Shallow quakes carry outsized impact because the seismic waves, P waves and S waves, travel only a short distance before striking the surface, maintaining high amplitude. The rupture likely propagated rapidly along a segment only a few kilometers long, but the released energy was sufficient to generate strong surface shaking across a wide area. Seismologists emphasize that the aftershock pattern reveals the fault zone geometry. The cluster of magnitude 5 aftershocks aligned east-southeast of Calape indicates a northeast-southwest trending fault plain. Each aftershock represents an additional patch of crust adjusting to the stress redistribution caused by the main shock. This unzipping behavior is common in regions where faults are segmented and interconnected. Instead of one rupture breaking cleanly, the crust adjusts in increments, like the teeth of a zipper being undone one by one. Beyond the immediate rupture, however, lies a broader geodynamic theatre. The Philippine sea plate itself is unusual because, despite hosting one of the world's largest subduction networks, it has produced relatively few magnitude 8 or larger megathrust earthquakes compared to other arcs like Chile or Alaska. One theory is that the plate interfaces here are poorly coupled, meaning they slide more smoothly without storing enormous amounts of elastic strain. Yet this does not mean the region is safe. Instead, strain is released more frequently in moderately strong events like the Callop quake. This pattern produces a near-constant seismic background, with occasional destructive outbursts when faults closer to population centers rupture. The tectonic interplay also extends into volcanic systems. Subduction along both sides of the archipelago melts mantle material feeding a chain of active volcanoes from northern Luzon down to Mindanao. 
Fault ruptures like the one off Calipé can sometimes influence magmatic systems by redistributing stress in the crust, although no immediate volcanic unrest has been reported following this event. Still, the linkage between seismic and volcanic activity in such a tightly packed arc system remains an area of active research. The memory of past Philippine earthquakes looms over each new event. The destructive magnitude 7.6 Luzon quake of 1990, which killed over 2,400 people, was also associated with the Philippine Fault. In 1976, the Moro Gulf earthquake of magnitude 7.6 generated a tsunami that killed over 7,000 people. While the Calipé quake was smaller, its offshore epicenter raised immediate questions about whether vertical seabed displacement could generate hazardous waves. Early analyses suggest the fault motion was primarily strike-slip, meaning lateral movement with limited vertical displacement, thereby reducing tsunami potential. Still, the presence of multiple subduction trenches nearby means the risk of tsunami-generating quakes cannot be dismissed. What makes this region uniquely dangerous is the convergence of so many tectonic systems in a relatively small space. The East Luzon Trough to the north may represent a subduction zone in its infancy, while to the south the Negros and Cotabato trenches swallow the Sunda Plate. To the east, the Philippine Trench devours the Philippine Sea Plate, and slicing through the heart of the archipelago, the Philippine Fault creeps, slips, and occasionally snaps with devastating force. The magnitude 6.9 earthquake that shook the waters off Calipé is not just another tremor to be logged in seismic archives. It is a reminder of the restless and unforgiving tectonic stage upon which the Philippines stands. Every shift, every rupture, every aftershock that struck from 9.59 in the evening until the early hours past midnight is part of a deeper story of plates grinding, colliding and stretching in ways that will never be fully tamed. The science is clear. The archipelago sits at the crossroads of immense forces, and while researchers can model stress fields and map fault lines, the exact moment when stored strain will give way to violent shaking remains beyond precise prediction. What we do know is that the energy beneath this region never sleeps, and each quake is a chapter in an ongoing narrative written in rock, fault, and mantle. If you found value in this detailed breakdown of the processes driving the Calipé earthquake sequence, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of Earth's most powerful forces. And do not forget to tap that hype icon to help this video reach a wider audience, because understanding the science behind the shaking is one of the best ways we can prepare for what may come next.